Hello everyone, it's Dylan from Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything and welcome back to another Yu-Gi-Oh! video. This time we are going to be going over the best rivals in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! This is a video that I'm actually kind of surprised I have not made up to this point, but the rivals in Yu-Gi-Oh! have always been fantastically done and I have to say this was one of the hardest lists for me to rank in the history of me doing this channel. We are going to be going over eight different rivals. Now I know a lot of you might say, well, Dylan, there's only six shows. Why eight rivals? That's because in GX and Zexel, I am considering Shark and Kaito, as well as Manjome and Hellkaiser as the rivals of those main characters. There might be a little debate there as to who is the true rival, but I've always viewed those shows as having two instead of one rival character, and so we're just going to rank all eight of them. Without further ado, let's get into it. I hope you guys leave me your favorite rival characters down below in the comments. The best Yu-Gi-Oh! rivals. Let's begin. Kicking off this list is a character that I know a lot of people love, mainly for the meme, and that is Manjome, or Chaz in the English dub. GX had two rivals in my opinion, and this is a case where I enjoyed the other rival in Kaiser a bit more. Something that was hard for me to take seriously with Chaz was how much he struggled against our main character. He dueled Judai seven times. Seven times throughout Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, the most of any rival versus protagonist matchup, and you want to know how many times he beat Judai? Not once. Two no decisions and five losses. I know he probably would have beaten Judai the last time they dueled if it didn't get interrupted, but that always annoyed me about Manjome's character. But then again, every character in GX besides Jaden was pretty underused and had a decent amount of loss potential because the cast was just so big. Manjome is no different. With that being said, I did enjoy the path he took as a character. He starts off as a bitter guy, but grows into a more mature character and even beat Edo in Season 4, which really symbolized how much he had grown as a character and as a duelist. Manjome's ability to hype up a crowd is unrivaled, and they took a fun, comedic relief angle for the rival, but ultimately, it was kind of hard for me to take him seriously in moments where he was supposed to be this legitimate rival character. I don't dislike Manjome, but this list is stacked with so many many great characters that he unfortunately gets left in the dust. Coming in next is Shark or Nash from Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel. Shark is a really good character, but pretty low compared to the other rivals. A big characteristic I enjoy in rivals is their ability to beat the main characters, and much like Chaz, that was an issue for Shark. Shark lost to Yuma in the second episode of the show, and that always kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I have always felt that rivals should be able to stand up to the main pro tag, and it should be a really tough challenge for the main character to beat the main rival. Granted, Yuma did get the assistance from Astral in that duel, so I guess it's kind of understandable, but I still thought it was kind of an underwhelming debut duel for Shark, and rivals are supposed to push our lead character to be better after all. Shark dueled Yuma six times, which is a lot for for any protag versus rival matchup, and he defeated him only once. He lost to Yuma four different times, with one duel ending without a finish. On top of that, the other rival in the show, which is Kaito, is just in my opinion a much better rival to Yuma than Shark, and a character that I absolutely loved watching, which obviously decreases Shark's value for me throughout the show. With that being said, the story Shark's character tells is great, and really is incredible in the final arc of the show. I always loved his final speech after Yuma defeats him, and the plot twist of him being a Baryan is a really great plot twist in Zexel. However, this is a list of titans in Yu-Gi-Oh! All of them are really developed characters, so even though I liked Shark a lot throughout Zexel, he does come in at the lowly 7th place. The other Yu-Gi-Oh! GX rival comes in in the number 6 spot, Ryo Marafuji, or Hellkaiser, Zane Truesdale in the dub, who was at one point my favorite character in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! For the last few months, I've gone back and watched most of the duels that all the rivals competed in, so I could make this list as accurate as I possibly could. So here is my issue with Marafuji, and why he's kind of fallen in my hindsighted perspective. Season 1 Kaiser is fantastic. He is humble, calm, a talented duelist, intelligent, everything I love in a character. If he maintained this personality throughout GX, he's probably number one or two on this list. 
He even duels Judai three times, beats him once, and draws with him twice. He didn't lose to Judai once, the same duelist who racked up 70 plus wins throughout Yu-Gi-Oh! GX. I mean, man, is that impressive. My issue with Kaiser is this. After Season 1, he lost his mind. He struggled to duel in the Pro League and became extremely power hungry. Honestly, he didn't even really become power hungry, he just became hell-bent on winning. It got so extreme that he almost killed his younger brother, Sho, in a duel during Season 2. It was honestly tough for me to get behind him when he became like this, and I feel like he further and further strayed from being that rival character towards Judai. He wasn't even possessed, which can be an excuse, and he literally almost kills his brother under his own free will. Then Season 3 comes along, he has this fantastic duel with Johan, one of the best duels in all of Yu-Gi-Oh!, and then perishes after the duel ends. The way he comes back in Season 4 always confuses me. It's never explained, he washes up on the beach, and the reason he is in a wheelchair is never explained well either. Then when he says that Sho has surpassed him after he beats Makoto, that always annoyed me a little bit. I understand Season 4 was all about Judai's inner friends becoming well-developed characters and having their moment in the spotlight, but Sho didn't have one big win besides that Season 4 duel against Makoto, and now you're going to claim he's a better duelist than you? I always thought that was a crazy and kind of unfounded thing for him to say. Now, I may be sounding negative, but I really do love Kaiser as a character, as I love genuinely all the characters on this list. I feel when you put a character lower on a list, you kind of need to give reasons why. Ryo Kaiser is a good character throughout GX, I just wish he stayed the way he was in Season 1, and for all the aforementioned reasons, he comes in at the number 6 spot. This might be a bit unpopular, but I'm putting Seto Kaiba behind four other rivals and in fifth place. Seto is a great character, and in terms of his rivalry with Yugi, it's fantastic. They have the best rivalry and probably the most well-known rivalry in the entire Yu-Gi-Oh! universe, period. Of course, this list is not analyzing the rivalry and is more analyzing the rival characters. Kaiba is an absolute badass during the entirety of the show, but he's definitely arrogant and selfish. And I guess this is a personal thing because I always enjoy when characters are strong but humble, and Kaiba is definitely a strong character, but humble is about the most opposite word you can use to describe him. But the real issue I I had with Kaiba was that he acted like he was this legendary best duelist who ever lived, and he is a good duelist, don't get me wrong, but he never beat Yugi. I know he technically did during the Duelist Kingdom arc, but if he didn't threaten to kill himself, Yugi would have attacked and he would have lost. And also, looking back on it, he never really had a big character win. Think about it, Jack beats Aporia in 5Ds, Kaito beats Mizael in Zexel, while Kaiba lost to Pegasus, lost to Darts, and lost to Noah Kaiba. Now that I think about it, I have no idea why he didn't beat Noah. That arc was literally Seto Kaiba's arc, and they don't even let him get the big win. Yugi has to step in after he has been turned to stone. The guy lost his soul about three different times, yet refuses to believe in his ancient past and anything paranormal happening or supernatural happening for about half the show. I felt from the first episode to the final episode of Yu-Gi-Oh, his character did not develop much in terms of becoming more friendly and more appreciative of Yu-Gi and his friends. Now, you could argue that he showed signs of becoming more appreciative during the final Yugi vs. Yugi duel, which would be fair, but the fact that it took him over 200 episodes to finally give Yugi or anyone else but himself credit says a lot. Don't get me wrong, Kaiba is an awesome character and one of my favorites in the Yu-Gi-Oh! universe, and I'm not trying to bash him in any way, I'm just giving my reasons for putting him in this spot. With all that being said, Seto Kaiba places number 5 for me on this list. These next four were so hard. The best character in Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5 and the guy who takes fourth is Reiji Akaba. Reiji is everything you want in a rival character. A fantastic duelist, calm, calculated, intelligent, motivated. He literally is the embodiment of everything I look for in a rival. Nothing happens in Arc 5 without Akaba Reiji. He was always one step ahead of everyone, whether it was the Council in Synchro, his own father at Academia, Shun, Serena, it didn't matter. He always knew what was going on. He was able to develop technology that let the Lancers travel through dimensions. Moreover, he was the one that created the Lancers, and without that, Zark probably destroys everything in this world. 
The one negative about Reiji is he just didn't duel enough, and sometimes he was kind of forgotten in the overcrowded cast of the show. After his second duel with Yuya, he didn't duel again until he defeated Rajay in episode 99. Through the first 130 episodes, and no, I'm not making this up, Reiji dueled three times. That's it in 130 episodes, which let's be honest, is just a really bad dueling presence for any character to have, especially the rival. His lack of presence hurts his character, and at times he didn't really feel like a true rival to Yuya, but besides that one gripe, I thought he was a really great character. There was always that thought that he might turn evil, or he might be the mastermind behind the greater picture, but it never happened. So looking back on that in hindsight, that just makes me like his character more, knowing everything he did was with pure intentions. Between Reiji's intelligence, dueling ability, and the fact that nothing moves forward without his leadership, he was a treat to watch and a character I still miss dearly to this day. If he was a bit more utilized and had more steady screen time, he'd certainly be a few positions higher. Reiji comes in fourth. And again, man, these four characters were so hard to rank because they're all so good. Taking the bronze medal and edging out Reiji by a hair is Revolver the rival from Yu-Gi-Oh! Vrains. Revolver was an almost perfect rival who commanded a scene like no other character in his show. Revolver as a rival has a pretty unique arc since he starts out as being an antagonist playing the role of the season one villain, although rival is definitely a more fitting term for his overall role in the show. The speeches this man would give and the quotes he had throughout Vrains are some of the best in the show. He has to experience the death of his father in the middle of Vrains and becomes the true leader of the Knights of Hanoi, although we quickly learned that Revolver had a strong guilty conscience as he was the one who saved the kids from the lost incident and wanted to turn himself in for the crimes the Knights committed at the end of the show. Revolver's main goal was to destroy the Ignis, the abominations his father created. While his stance on this never wavered, he showed his ability to evolve and understand people, even referring to the Dark Ignis as I while on his deathbed after his battle with Lightning. Perhaps they saved the best for last when it came to Revolver. During his final duel against Soulburner, the way he was able to push Soulburner and get him to face his fears and get over his traumas was incredible. It was an absolutely breathtaking duel, and it was one of the rare times when in the middle of the duel, I realized we were watching a special character. Revolver talking about the afterlife in that duel still gives me chills, and he was one of the most stout characters Yu-Gi-Oh has ever had. Yu-Gi-Oh always seems to nail the rival. Revolver was no exception. He's the best character in Vrains, and the third best character on this list. Coming in at the runner-up spot is the self-proclaimed master of faster himself, Jack Atlas from Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds. I love Jack as a character, and I think his development from the beginning of the show to the end of the show is phenomenal. Jack starts out almost as an antagonist, similar to Revolver in a way, and ends up as a almost dual protagonist with Yusei by the end of the show. Sure, he was never close to the level that Yusei reached in terms of being the main guy, but you cannot argue that he was the second most important character in 5Ds. The role Jack plays in his show is probably the most substantial role any of these characters added to their own respective show. Jack was an extremely important character and even had multiple scenarios where he got his own arc and was the first to learn how to use a two-tuner monster to double-tune Scar Red Nova Dragon, which is still one of my favorite moments from 5Ds. The big reason he edges out Kaiba and a few of the other rivals on this list was just how humble and respectable his character became after Yusei defeated him in the first season. Season. He struggled to find his confidence after the loss, and Carly, who was one of many girls in love with him, helped him regain that confidence, which led him to become a much more respectable and likable duelist. What really stood out about Jack's character development was what he said at the end of the show when he lost to Yusei for the second time. He says, that was magnificent, you say, and gives a speech of how nobody is useless, and to me it just sums up how amazing a character Jack became throughout the story. A guy who all he cared about was being the best and winning, transformed into a guy who cares about everyone and is able to swallow his pride and congratulate Yusei on his win. To me, Jack Atlas has maybe the best character development in all of Yu-Gi-Oh, and he literally barely misses out at topping this list. The best rival in Yu-Gi-Oh! 
is Kaito Tenjo from Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel, or Kite in the dub. Now, Zexel obviously gets a lot of hate, although I think the hate for Zexel has definitely died down as the years have gone on, but even people who seem to dislike Zexel always seem to be able to realize just how great Kaito was, and Kaito really is a fantastic character. The role he plays in Zexel is maybe a more interesting role than the main character Yuma plays. In terms of rival versus rival, Kaito is just like Mario. Fuji Ryo in the fact that he dueled the main character three times and never lost, beating Yuma once and drawing the other two times. Even beating Yuma at the end of a season where no one gave him much of a chance to win. Fun fact, Ryo and Kaito are the only characters in Yu-Gi-Oh! history who have dueled the main protagonist at least three times and not lose once. So when you compare Kaito and Shark's record versus Yuma in that sense, you can see why I like Kaito a lot more. He is a very polished duelist and one of the best duelists in the Yu-Gi-Oh! universe. The best one in Zexel, definitely. Kaito starts off as a bit of an anti-hero, but turns into a fantastic character who you can really root for as Zexel goes on. He cares about everyone and will always fight for his family and Yuma when he has to. Another thing that was really great about Kaido's character was the fact his rivalry with Yuma was not the only rivalry that he had going for him in Zexel. His rivalries against Tron, and especially Mizael, were fascinating to watch. That moon duel between him and Mizael was phenomenal, and the death scene he had after was one of the best emotional scenes in all of Yu-Gi-Oh!, and the reason it's one of the best emotional scenes is because we all cared about Kaido so much at that point, knowing what he was fighting for, and knowing the kind of pure-hearted character he actually was. He is a really fantastic character, and adds so much depth to Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel, and in my opinion, he just edges out Jack, Revolver, and Reiji, and is the best rival character that we have ever had in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! And that about wraps it up. Thank you all so much for watching my best rivals ranked in Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, I know there was a lot to talk about. I know we talked about a lot. Uh, some characters that I'm sure will get mentioned. I did not mention Edo because even though Edo was a rival in Season 2, he didn't duel Judai outside of that season. And so for me, he was just a season-specific rival, not a show rival. Uh, he wasn't a rival the entirety of GX. I know that's a character a lot of people might say, why didn't you add? Shingo might be another one from Arc 5, but Shingo to me was just more of a comedic relief character. I, I never felt like he was a rival to Yuya. They, they never dueled late in the show, so I know those are two people that maybe I could have ranked, but I, I just don't view them as actual rivals. But anyway, guys... Please let me know all your thoughts on this video. Special thank you to Stella Sky for requesting this video as my Egyptian God tier patron for the month of May. Huge thank you to her. And yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed. Please let me know your thoughts down below. A special thank you to my platinum tier patrons, Jorge Carrillo, Horace May, Goosey Q, Smith620, Blue Maiden28, Panther J, Vincent Vanderveen, Nero, Jarrett Bueller, and Aura Dragon, and to my Diamond Tier Patrons, Jesse Wood, Latrell Smith, Pegasus Saya, and Brandon Gomez, and to my Egyptian God Tier Patron, Stella Sky. Thank you to everyone who supports me over on Patreon, and to everyone who is a channel member. You guys help me out tremendously. I will talk to you all down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have an amazing day.